Dr. Martins are one of Britain's most iconic brands. Over 50 years, they've gone from being a work shoe, a symbol of rebellion for youth subcultures, to being a fashion icon worn by millions around the world. Dr. Klaus Martin, who was a German army doctor during the Second World War, broke his ankle in a skiing accident. As the work boots at that time were very uncomfortable, causing his ankle a lot of pain, he found himself discussing with his business partner, Dr. Funk, how come you can get a smooth ride in a car on air-filled tyres, but you couldn't get anything comparable with that in the boots on your feet. So, they both hatched up the concept of the airway sole, trapping pockets of air between melted layers of PVC rubber. This product looked quite different to the DMs today and was only sold and marketed in Germany and was mainly used by women as a household product. In England, Bill Griggs, who was running a Northamptonshire shoe factory, was looking for something to set his products apart from others. So when he found out about the air-filled sole, he bought the licence for it to be sold in England and changed the look and name of it to market in the UK. This is when the first range of Dr Martins as we know them got created and his factory in Cobbs Lane, Northamptonshire is still producing the DM Made in England range today. The British Boot Company in Camden Town are a family business that was established over 50 years ago and are one of the first retailers in the UK to feature the Dr Martins. There was not a lot of places willing to take up the brand Dr Martins originally. Just from there, the rest, as they say, is history. It's carried on being sold in this branch now for 55 years almost. So this is a replica of how they were first came off the production line in the 1960s. So it's the same leather the same cut sole, wax yellow stitching, and it's got the uh, the backing inside there as well. Doc Martins were actually made not far from where I was brought up in Kettering, Northamptonshire. They were made at uh, Greg's over in Il Earthling Borough, and my sister actually had a job there, so my sister made um, made these shoes. And a pair of Doc Martins, um, my father got me a pair with the steel toe caps. Um, they were dreadful. I, I looked like Ronald McDonald when I was wearing them, they were awful. But you know, when I was working delivering stuff from a van, they saved my, well, they saved my feet when a pallet fell on them and didn't break my toes, uh, you know. So um, I have a lot to be thankful for, for Doc Martens, in not just from a cultural and fashion point of view, but from a physical point of view as well. So, so they, they, were, they were pretty cool. In the 1960s, Dr. Martins were exclusively worn by working class men in the UK. This changed when the first generation of the skinhead culture started emerging and adapted Dr. Martins as their uniform. They wanted to show off their working class roots and rebel against the summer of love and hippie fashion that was coming up at the time. They adopted the high-ending jeans and the shaved heads from the Jamaican immigrants coming into the UK and they loved Jamaican music, especially ska that they brought with them. Skinheads always wore heavy boots but only adapted Dr. Martins as their uniform when the football police banned the steel toe cap predecessor. This was a form of rebellion against the police so already the rebellious nature of Dr. Martins was established. They were often seen dancing to scar alongside Jamaican rude boys in those days. The first person to bring Dr. Martens into popular culture, though, and give them a direct link to music was Pete Townsend, the lead guitarist and songwriter who founded The Who. He was wearing them as a part of his work clothes and so often wore them in band rehearsals and then gigs, making them famous. The Who went on to become one of the most influential rock bands of that time. In 1969, The Who wrote the rock opera Tommy, which was praised by critics as the most influential and best rock album since Sgt Pepper's. 
This album got made into a film in 1975 in which Elton John famously wore massive DMs. Pete Townsend inspired a whole generation of pop youth cultures which all defined themselves by what sort of music they listened to, what sort of bikes they rode and what sort of clothes they wore. One of these movements was British pub rock, which Ian Drury was part of, and you could see him and his son wearing DMs on his album cover, New Boots and Panties. In 1975, punk started turning the fashion world on its head with artists like the Sex Pistols. You know, it was, it was probably 76, I guess the birth of punk, you know, the, the, the Pistols, the, the, the Clash, lots of other bands. I think, you know, it was just a bit of a, a bit of a, you know, a rebellious brand at that stage. And it was a bit of a kind of one of those to, uh, to the, uh, you know, to the establishment, I guess. During the punk days, the cost of Dr. Martin's was £20, something made famous by Alexis Sale in his series, The Young Ones. There's only one thing that unites us, one thing that we all have in common. What is it? What is that one thing that unites us? It's not class or ideology, colour, creed or roots. The only thing that unites us is Dr. Martin's boots. And Dr. Martin gave his boots to the world so that everybody can be free. They're classless, matchless, he was just one from retail for only £19.99p. Pretty soon everybody be after punk was fading in 1979 and throughout the beginning of the 80s, two-tone, a record label and music style set up by the specials was the big new thing in the alternative music scene. The specials were fusing Jamaican, ska, punk and rock together with real-life lyrics and political messages about Thatcher's Britain. Two-tone was like a mix of rude boys, skinheads and mod fashions, so the artists and supporters of two-tone were seen wearing things like Harrington jackets, Ben Sherman shirts, two-tone suits and, of course, Dr Martins. Madness, who had their breakthrough in two-tone, went on to become a British institution and had the biggest role in bringing Dr Martins back into the hearts and minds of British youth subculture. Madness were constantly wearing and talking about Dr Martins. Here we are in Holtz in Camden Town, where, um, where we've been buying boots for a long time. This is the, this is the temple of DMs. We worship at the temple of DMs. Hello boys, I haven't seen you for a long time. Oh my, last time I saw you are upstairs waiting for the top of the pops to start. Still bouncing about, you'll buy a pair of boots one these days, won't you, Lee? I remember your first single, Prince. Bastards, he sold the heat. With a rock steady beat. Chrissy Boy from Madness told me the proper way to do the laces. You have to do the laces so they're kind of they go across like that, like the footballers do it. Um, and um, and he also told me the best way to make ordinary brown ones red. Um, you cover you, you you dye them red and then you get the oxblood paint um, polish and spend at least four months polishing them up and, and um, which is what I did and I had a terrific pair of Doc Martens until they until I didn't until they fell to bits um, around about 1983 so one of the very famous bands that come in the store and still shop here are the Madness Boys um, so they gladly sign their boots and endorse the store for what we do and what we do sell um, amongst the boots though we also have signed boot by Neville Staples from the specials I mean it was a few years ago but he did come in the store did buy a few boots and gladly signed a pair of boots for us uh, my name's Neville Staple the original rude boy and I um, was in the specials from boy 3 my first memory of being in the band and um, the boot. <laughs> when I first saw the boots, I thought it was just a skinhead. The National Front, and uh, we used to have a lot of problems with them. And being a rude boy, which let me explain what a rude boy is. Rude boy could be your bad, rude boy could be the way you dress, and rude could be when your parents say, Stop being a rude boy.
we used to get National Front comes to the gig and um, Z Carl and Z Carl and all that. And I'm thinking, you paid your money to come into a show and you're, uh, you're going to get kicked out after two numbers because you're causing trouble. In 1978, the specials went on tour with The Clash, and we played a gig um, in Crawley, made by Gatwick Airport there, and every South London firm was there, you know, and um, all these skinheads, and it was, the atmosphere was very, very nasty indeed, you know, and a lot of these were sort of outward displaying the National Front uh, badges and all this kind of stuff, and uh, it was a really horrid gig, but it made us realise that this was going to have to be our audience. When we, you know, if we were going to be famous, these were the sort of people we needed to, you know, to talk to, you know, to get them to change their minds. You're white, I'm black, there's no need to fight. And that's why two-toned. Two-toned, hence black and white. My introduction to Doc Martens was like it was the footwear worn by people who um, were quite aggressive and didn't like me. So <laughs> it was quite interesting that when I joined the specials to have to adopt this guy, this footwear as part of the uniform. Even girls who have got nothing to do with the two-tone, you'll see them in town there at Martins. Original rude girl scout. Grab your partner as a man who got to the scout. Scout. Been wearing Doc Martens since I was a kid. Um, I think what it was when we were younger, Doc Martens they had this toughness about them, and I've always been a rude girl. I was a tomboy that became a rude girl. I hung out with skinheads, mods, rude boys, rude girls, sound system guys, um, and Doc Martens were. It, it's the image, the toughness. I know they do like lady versions now, but even now, with all the different varieties around, I like the more masculine looking boots. They give me that tough image, that tough rude girl look. So I love them, I wear the clothes as well. So we all just aspire to having a pair of these to, for that toughness. All those things you need, you don't have to be a lying cheat. On top of that, when all of these things fused together, around about the two-tone era, we all wanted to look tough, have the image, we'd have the Arrington jackets on, we'd have a button-down shirt on, and the ends. I couldn't really tell you why, you know, the, um, a skinhead has that relationship with a pair of Dr. Martins, or Ben Sherman shirt, or tonic suit, all I know is that it works really well together. If you want to leave, you can leave, by all means, that's fine by me, but I've got one question to ask you, and that's, do you consider yourself English or Jamaican? English. In the late 80s and early 90s, as the old youth cultures were growing up, DMs started to be manufactured in a lot more different shapes, sizes and colours to reach a wider and more female audience. The 90s was also the time in which Britpop became popular. This meant that bands like Blur, Suede and The Smiths were looking back to some of the old music and fashion movements and with that introduced Dr Martins to a new generation. They have definitely become a lot more popular and it's not just like a punk subculture thing anymore. It's a bit of a, t a timeless brand really, especially, you know, with the, with the, link, the link to music is obviously constantly changing and I think Do Dr. Martin's uh, do well to keep up with that and um, hopefully our relationship can go on and on and on because they're a really big help for us. In the late 90s, with the pre-millennium tension, Dr Martin's sales started plummeting and they had to shut down all of their UK manufacturing and move it overseas to produce them for a cheaper price. Your classic Dr Martins are now produced in Asia. So the yellow tag stock you see, this is Dr Martin, Airwear Dr Martin, that is the brand. Airwear is the factory who make Dr Martins under licence. 
But in the store we also sell other products. So if you look at this product here, this is Solover. It's a blue tag. It is a different tag. It is a different brand. But Solover was a factory who in the old days made Dr. Martens under license originally. They do have a link with the Dr. Martin brand, so to speak, as it was a manufacturer of the brand. But however, now it's its own brand now. So it's a Solover upper with its own Solover sole unit. But everything made by the Solover factory is produced in England. Also on the bench here, we do have some very old school vintage Dr. Martins made in England. The sole unit is totally different to a now modern Chinese Asian produced item. Thankfully, in the noughties, sales started picking up again and they could reopen the Northamptonshire factory. And now they have some exciting collaborations, collections and projects coming up. I can live a lie running for my life I will always want you I came in like a wreck What is the authentic style of this new Dutch craze? These basic steps may be done face to face or side by side with your partner. Nowadays, the headquarters of Dr. Martins is in Camden Town. Camden always had a reputation for being the centre of indie music and so the centre of youth subcultures in London. Even today, there are still a few rock and roll pubs left that go hand in hand with the rebellious spirit of Dr. Martins, such as the Dublin Castle. Being the birthplace of madness, they have a history here of many famous bands and artists performing. They still feature the music on a nearly daily basis, such as in the annual Madness Fan Meetup, in which nearly everybody wears Dr. Martins. We're here next door to the uh, Dublin Castle. We're yeah. here today for a pre-madness concert. I started wearing them basically in the 80s. You can find a pair to go with everything and they're good for the weather really. As I reckon I got them when I was going to school so I was probably about 10-ish. Funnily enough I wasn't actually allowed to wear trainers as a kid. I was only allowed to wear Doc Martens. You know, I've had all colours and different holes in mine. Then I wear them as a work boot because I worked on the fairground. That was the only thing that I'd uh, hold up on a waltzer. You know what I mean? It started falling off. And with the music. With the music. Mine was more with the music. I think even now, you know, you see somebody wearing Doc Martens in the street and you kind of like, there's like an unspoken nod that you do, you know, like a fellow Doc Martens wearer. Hey. Oh, yeah. Dr. Martens will never go out of fashion. We're in 2015 now. They've got the bands like Madness, all the two tone bands still wear them. To me, Dr. Martens will go on and on and on. When I was a child growing up in you know 1979, being a skinhead and a madness fan, specials, the beat, everything, etc., etc., uh, they were part and parcel of growing up. You know, they're still really important to a lot of people, and you know, it's just the evolution of, of fashion. Dr. Martin, Dr. Martin Boots, Dr. Martin, Dr. Martin, Dr. Martin Boots. I say I love my Dr. Martin Boots, but I love my Dr. Martins, Dr. Martin, Dr. Martin Boots.